photos from your phone just like a pro. and welcome to our channel Married Friends. This is the sixth video of our tips to shoot series where we talk about how you can make videos, how you can click photos, food photos especially and we try to cover every aspect in the most layman language so that even if you're a beginner, you can master the art of using a camera, making videos and clicking photos also. Because what happens when we start something new, sometimes it gets so overwhelming, it gets so scary that we quit in between but hey, if I can do it, so can you, my friend. Recently, we conducted a session on Saloni Shivasta's Hustle Post Academy. That session was on photography for beginners. And at that time, we got a lot of requests for mobile photography. Because obviously, not everyone has a DSLR camera. And honestly, these days, your mobile phone camera, they are no less than any expensive, giant DSLR camera. Only difference that you get with DSLR is that you get better resolution, focus, uh, depth of field, with DSLR but obviously you need to invest a lot of money to buy that but no worries we will click absolutely Instagram worthy photos using just our phone because photography mein kya hai? a lot of things are same like lighting, composition, camera angle and uh, editing all these things are same so if you can tackle all these things it doesn't matter which camera you're using so just grab your phone and let's get shooting Okay, first thing that we need to do is set up a studio. Well, I say this all the time that good lighting is everything. Lighting is something that can either make your photo or break your photo. So find a spot in your home where you get just the perfect light. Make sure that lighting is not very harsh, it's not bright, it's not dull, dark. What kind of light do we need? We need slightly diffuse, slightly soft light because that kind of light creates magic in your photo. So for me, this is the spot where I clicked all my photos. Yes, all my photos are clicked just right here when I'm standing. This is my bedroom. This is the balcony door from where I get good amount of light, natural light, either early in the morning or in the evening around 5.30 or 6 o'clock. Yes, you can hear the bird sounds from here also. Anyway, so enough said, find a spot in your home and let's set up the studio. Alright, next comes the composition. Well, it doesn't matter whether you're clicking from your phone or using a DSLR camera. If you have a good, beautiful composition, your photo will definitely stand out. I made a separate video on composition where I talked about why is it important, what are the things you need to keep in mind to set the composition, do's and don'ts, everything. So do check it out. I'll put the link here. Definitely click it and watch the video. Anyway, today we are going to clip photos of these homemade coconut cookies which I made just yesterday for Jatin. <laughs> these are really yummy. So we are going to click photos of these cookies. So let's set the composition. But before that, let's have one. What's it? <laughs> Okay, our studio is set, our composition is also done, now it's time to click the photos. There are two things that you can do here, either you can use the built-in camera which is already there on your phone or you can use some app to click the photos. 
One app that I find good is Lightroom. Yes, you can click photos with that plus edit it too in the same app. So this is the Lightroom application that I'm going to use to click photos. If you can see over here, there's this blue area. On the right hand side of it, there's this camera icon. If you can see, let's click on this and see what happens. Oh, now we can see the entire canvas that we need to click. I saw I have a cookie. I can't wait. <laughs> let's finish this video first. Anyway. First thing that you need to do is, if you can see this drop down over here, let's click on this. There are three options. We need to click on this professional icon because we all are professionals here. Am I right? I am right. <laughs> okay, now after clicking on this professional setting, we can see a couple of controls that popped up. Now, depending on the lighting and the exposure that you need to click your photo, we need to change these settings. I mostly click using the daylight option, which is right here. There are other options also but i'm i'm just going with the daylight it's working fine with the light that i'm getting over here then there's the shutter speed iso focus all these things you can change by dragging this from left to right let me show you how it works for example we need to ch uh, change the shutter speed let's drag it on the right hand side you can see it's so much exposed and if i drag it to the right it's absolutely dark so we need to adjust it as per the lighting in our room or the exposure that we want okay I think this much anyway I'll change it hmm. then there's this ISO option similarly you can change it from left to right depending on what kind of lighting you want so I think this much is fine for my photo yeah I think this looks perfect maybe a little more yeah here okay over here you can three uh, you can see these three uh, dots let's click on this now there are again couple of options I need to focus on this one which is the grid display now grids are really important because these grids I'll show you what happens these lines that you can see over here these are the grids so depending on what kind of grids you want, I mostly go for this um, this grid where the whole canvas is divided into nine equal parts. Now why grids are important? Grids tell you that from like where do you need to place your main subject and then different elements and props, you get a better idea of it. Also with the grids, you get to know if your angle is just right or not. If you can see over here, this cursor is constantly moving because your hands are always shaky so it's always better to use a tripod and so that your angle is you know well balanced here if i'm clicking a flat lay i need to put it right over here okay now it's moving now let's click photo but before that make sure that your camera lens is absolutely clean because your phone is always on your hands we even use a phone while we eat so there are chances that if this camera lens is dirty your photo might come a little blurry and you won't like that so let's take your t-shirt or your top and just wipe it well all right now let's click the photo okay now let me click the photo now it's time to edit the photo you know what if you take care of the lighting and the composition part there's not much needed to do in post processing or in editing there's just a little bit of touch up just here and there and it really enhances the photo and makes it ready for Instagram. Now the app that I use to edit my photos is Snapseed and this is the workflow that I follow. Let me show it to you. Okay, so when you open the Snapseed ad, this is the screen which will appear. Now let's add a photo here to edit by clicking on this plus sign. Let's select our cookie photo. Yes, here it is. Now let's start editing. Here you can see a lot of filters also but we are not going to use that. We'll edit our photo on our own. For that let's click on the tools button. Oh my god there are so many options but don't get scared. We are just going to use this tune image. After clicking on the tune image there are a lot of controls that you will get. You can either change the brightness, contrast, saturation, warmth. A lot of options are there. So just select one. For example, here I'm selecting brightness first and I'm just going to drag it and see what looks best for this photo. Now let's see what changing the shadows will do here. Okay, I think this is okay. Okay, I also want to change the highlights so that I can make the photo look more bright and white. Okay. 
Okay, one point here that you may also need to re-edit what's already done. For example, I've already adjusted the shadows, but after changing the highlights, I may need to edit it again. So keep adjusting and see what looks good, okay? Now there's one more tool which I use a lot and that is the selective tool. So I'm, I'm using the selective tool so that I can just change the brightness of the cookies because I don't want to change the brightness of the entire photo. So that's it. I think it looks fine and I can share it on Instagram. What do you say, huh? Let me show you the difference between the original and the edited photo. Can you see that? I'm happy with it. Now let's export. So here is the original photo and the edited one. So that's all for today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button because it really helps the video reach more and more people. And also, please subscribe to the channel. If you have anything to ask or share, do comment down below in the comment section or you can also connect with us on Instagram. We are really active there. I reply instantly, I mean, not every time, but <laughs> I try to. Anyway, that's all for today. Bye, take care and never stop learning. Keep practicing. Hey, the show is not over yet. There's something very, very special that we care for the end and that is just like I have told you that recently we conducted a session at Hazza Post Academy and in that session we gave assignment to all these students where they were supposed to send click photos and send it to us and we were supposed to select just 10 photos but we selected more because all the photos were so good. I mean, we were really impressed and happy with all the photos that we got. We also mentioned the Instagram handle of all the students who shared the photos with us. So if you want to connect with them, just go for it. Thank you so much and all the best for your photography journey. So here are those 12 photos. Enjoy!